So you talked about last, not last the Sunday before, but the mustard bottle. What? How does mustard make water? And it's almost a Jesus principle because I, I'm the only one in the house that uses the mustard, and I, it's impossible for me to to get a hot dog, no yeah. matter how hard I try, <laughs> and not have just that nasty water. Nasty. Comes out. It just poisons the whole dog. And I'm and my family, I'm the only one that you, that eats mustard Me on too. the hot dog, so I always get the nasty water. I always get it. I think the, the front of the mustard bottle should just be called shake. So that you never forget. You're like But even though you shake it, it's still got the it's nasty. It's still water. got the and the ketchup bottle, the new one. The old ones, I know they were a lot of work, but you know, you could work how much ketchup got on your hot dog. The new ones I squeeze and it doesn't matter. I squeeze little, little, nothing comes out, and then I squeeze it and it goes. Boom! A big glob comes out. Half the bottle hits your hot dog in one spot. And then you go... I like a steady stream on my dog. That's I what I do. I like I to have consistency. I want so a consistent stream. Every bite tastes the same. So now you're taking your finger and you're sliding oh, the ketchup across got, the dog. Now you got a ketchup finger. Uh, nah, it's just... And the person behind you is grossed out, so... We could, you said we could put a man on the moon, but I don't think we ever put a man on the moon yet. And that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> we'll we never right made back. it. We didn't make it to the moon. <laughs>
but your your ride is going to be bumpier. It's going to be bumpier. It is going to, and be it might not be as bumpy for you. Maybe you're filled up. Maybe you're racing church. You got a lot of scripture to to, right. to hone this thing, and you're you're living on that. But man, it's going to be tough for your legacy, right? Because your kids aren't going to have the foundation you got because they weren't raised in church. And That's your so family's good. not going to have the foundation you had because they weren't raised in church. They're not going to be able to ride those scriptures out that, that you got on the inside of you. And you're not building what's important to God. I, well, I just be, the you're kind of AWOL from the army of God, right? The church is important to God. This is what goes into the world, is a bright light, draws people to it, gets people saved, making a difference. It's the church. It's the chief command center for advancing the kingdom of God. There's It'd be no like question. the quarterback not showing up for practice. He, calls he knows it, how to throw the ball. That's right. But he's not showing up. And he's just and he's in the stands telling people how to throw the ball, right? <laughs> he's uh, that church, yeah. they don't know what they're doing. They lost again. You know what? Sometimes teams will lose. It's full of people. And sometimes churches will make bad decisions. And sometimes churches will not be super effective in their community. But maybe you need to get in there and help make it effective in that community. Oh. Maybe you need to get in there and be the catalyst. Isn't that for what mom and dad did? Yeah. Mom and dad, we would go to church. God would say, hey, this is your church. They have no children's program. They have, about, no, nothing. They have, they have nothing. no children's program. They have nothing. And, and we so, were kids. So our parents didn't go... Well, I'm going to find some different church. No, no, my par- our parents go, hey, we're going to start a children's program next Sunday. Is that all right with you folks? They just filled the need. They just filled the need. And that's what Paul said when he said, I load up in my body with afflictions for the sake of what is lacking in the body I of love Christ. That. What he was saying is, is, whatever's missing in your church, I'll become. Yeah. You need an usher? I'm ushering. You need a greeter? I agree. Because I'm here to strengthen the equipping right. center. This is what God's up to. Now, when I'm going to get involved with what God's up when to. The church, get us going. We can't. Well, when, I don't even think we're going to talk about a scripture today. When the, when the church has a need, Paul didn't go, well, I don't, let me pray and see. If this is part of my purpose and my destiny. <laughs> right. No, Paul realized his purpose and destiny was to build the house. Yeah. What do you need me to do, God? Yeah. I will do it. I will be whatever you need to be to all people. And sometimes people say, well, I'm not going to go to a church that I don't agree with or I don't, I'm don't. i not going to be around that. And, and you go, well, okay, so Jesus went to church every weekend. And, and when he got there, you know what they were trying to do? The law. They were trying to kill him. <laughs> right. Well, people are mean to me. But Jesus went to the synagogue every Sabbath. As was, his custom, as was his custom, even though they didn't agree with him. They didn't like what he was preaching, and they wanted to kill him half the time. <laughs> that sounds like a bad thing. But he still established that this is where I want to be. If you wanted this to is... hear Jesus teach on the weekend, and you have... now, I know if you wanted to hear him during the week, you went down to the lake, you went yeah. down to the field, because he was out in the city and the community making a difference. But once a week, he was, he was in God's house, in that. and that's where you went and heard his word. And that was one of the patterns. You know, in order to have a Christ-like life that doesn't have the bumps... You got to follow the pattern. Jesus right. set up a pattern for you and I yeah. about how to have it. We should get to our scripture though, maybe. What is it? I don't even know now. I'm lost. I don't either. Where were we? Oh, we were in Colossians. Colossians chapter two, verse nine. Verse nine. Thank uh, you for, for with us. in Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, yes. and you are complete. I love that. I'm complete uh-huh. in Him. I'm not incomplete. I'm not missing. I'm not broken. But I am complete in Him, who is the head of all principi- principality and power. And, and that's really what we want to bear out for you this morning is that, um, yes, God is, Christ is building you, but also recognize that you are completed in Him. Right. You are a completed work. When God rested from His work on the seventh day, it was because He had completed creation. Right. Okay, so, th- so, we, so now it's Christ who has completed us and is resting, seated, seated at the right hand of the Father. So you're f- a finished work. And a lot of times we think, well, I'm still incomplete. I'm still broken. I'm still a mess. And the, the, the thing is, is that you've been made brand new. All the old All things, things have passed new. away. You're Behold, new. You're a new creature and you're born of an incorruptible seed, which means that you've got to learn how to see yourself the way God sees you. you. Say, well, I'm not very righteous today. Yeah, you are. You actually are the righteous of God, not because of what you did or didn't do, but because Jesus has declared you righteous by faith. He has given you everything that you need yeah. for a righteous life. And so when we think that we're missing something or we're broken, it oftentimes can hold us back from going forward and doing some of the things that God wants us to do up ahead of us. But when I realize that I'm finished and I'm not missing anything, it allows me to go into my day going, okay, I'm not missing nothing. Let me go forth and do what is ahead of me, what God places in front of me, touch the lives that are there around me. Yeah. We got to pray over the day. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we are complete. Continue to minister to us this revelation, Lord. There's people here that are are listening to this program who are watching, Father God, that they feel like they're just a work in progress or even broken or even suffering from addiction or depression. But Lord, show them today that they're a completed work. 
that they're not addicted, Lord. The old person was addicted, that they're not broken, Lord, but they have a new father, they have healing in you, that they have everything that they need to be successful in this life, already given. They just need to receive it and realize and see what you see. In Jesus' name, amen. Watch this clip. Today we're going to start off in Psalm chapter 127. And with verse 1, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. The scripture that we know, unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It goes on to say, it's vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow, for so he gives his beloved rest. Unless the Lord builds the house, it, it says in Hebrews chapter 3, that Jesus is that builder. And Moses had honor, but Jesus, the builder of the house, is given even greater honor. It says that he is the one who built the house. Say built. Built is the indication that something's already done. A finished work. Right? Jesus on the cross, he's crying out, it is finished. When Jesus says it's finished, how many know it's finished? Yeah. And so Jesus said this. He said that if you destroy this temple, and he was pointing to the, the temple of the day when he was alive there. He was looking at the temple that they all came to. And he said, just destroy this temple and I'll rebuild it in three days. And he wasn't talking about just the, the building itself because they all kind of laughed at him and chuckled. But he was talking about that system of worship, that system, the old system of law, the old covenant, the old system of a sacrifice that you had to bring and the lamb, and then you had the lampstand and the altar and the bread and the mercy seat, and you had all this stuff happening in this, this house of worship, and Jesus is like, look, this is about to go away, and I'm going to change it all, and it's only going to take me three days to do it. They're like, hey, but it took us 46 years to build this thing. He's like, look, three days, boom, done. And when he says three days, we recognize, well, that's the death, burial, and resurrection, right? Which means that when he resurrected, he had built, right? He said, I'll build it in three days. It's not a work in progress, but it's a finished work that he built. So if we go back to Hebrews chapter 3, it says that Jesus built the house, and then it says this, and we are his house. If indeed, and then he tells us that we got to keep our faith in Jesus as our Messiah, so their qualification is, is Jesus your Messiah? Is he? Okay, so you're, you're, you're the if. You made it into the, if you believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God who died for your sins, you're in the if category. The if you believe. Okay, so if you believe, then you are his house. Is that right? But you are not a work in progress. You are a completed house, is my point. And he's talking about the gathering, but he's also talking about the individual. So when you received Jesus, you became the temple of the Holy Spirit. You did became the temple of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is saying to us today, and that is a completed work. When you became the born again, you became the offspring of God and born of an incorruptible seed. So let's go to Colossians chapter 2 for just a moment and verse 10. And you are complete in him. Say complete. complete. And you are complete in him. I want to teach this teaching. So I want to talk to you today about the smooth ride that, that we can have when we make better decisions in our life. And that Jesus, if we'll let him, will be the one who gives us the instruction and the power and the activation to live a life where we make better decisions, that he can overcome the things that we ourselves can't overcome. And I want to teach it from a position of a finished work. In other words, you're already complete. We're not trying to build you. See, a lot of times Christians, they get born again and they think, well, I drug all my old life into my new life. And so I'm like this old jalopy and this old car and I'm going to start fixing it up. I'm going to start kicking the tires. I'm going to start changing out the interior. I'm going to repaint this thing. But no, 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 that is not exact. That's not how it works. You're a completed work in Christ. You're already finished. He has already circumcised your heart 
With the hands of Jesus Christ himself, he performed circumcision in your heart, which means he created heart surgery in which the production chamber of your heart now belongs to the living God, and he will produce the things that he desires on the inside of you. And he has already given you the idea and concept of right and wrong. And then he gives you authority, and then he gives you power. Somebody say amen. He gives you the inheritance of Jesus Christ. You have everything that that you need to live a life and of godliness is what it says that we might participate in the divine nature first peter chapter or second peter chapter 1 that we might participate in the divine nature of god and escape the corruption of this world caused by evil desires you're complete you're finished you're holy you're righteous man you're done you're not you don't have to hand people that get around you a construction hat and say hey i'm a work in progress man pardon my dust under construction, man. No, 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 completed work. I wanna teach this teaching from the position of the completion that you are. When I say that Jesus is your builder, what I mean is, is that he has built you. Give us thumbs up. Share it, like, and subscribe. Get it up there. Don't forget about the prayer conference, October 13th through the 17th. It's gonna be off the hook. Be in church wherever you live. Go to church this weekend.